Today I wanted to bring you a tutorial on creating silly band style shapes. They've been so popular with the kids lately. Um, it'd be nice if we could incorporate them into some designs or maybe uh, create some greeting cards, holiday cards, birthday invitations uh, using silly band shapes. So today I'll give you a quick tutorial. It's very easy to do. Um, right now I'm starting with just a blank uh, Photoshop screen. I've chosen white as the background color. It helps us to see it better. And in order to create the shapes, um, we're actually going to use the shape tool in Photoshop, which is the little blob colored thing under your text uh, icon here. And we're just going to click on that. And you'll see shapes come up here. And if you click the little arrow next to it, you'll see there's uh, a, a whole bunch of uh, preset shapes in there. And I think for the first one, um, I'm going to choose a rabbit. Uh, and it's a black rabbit. Uh, some of these other ones, like uh, with the, the footprint there, where you have a bunch of different um, disconnected shapes, don't work very well. But uh, anything solid and totally black will work very well for that. Uh, once I've selected the rabbit, I'll just come over here to my um, screen and I don't want to actually put it on the background layer because I'll, I might want to move it around a little bit later. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my layers palette and create a separate layer. So now I have my own layer and on that layer I'm going to drag the rabbit. And then uh, just use your uh, left mouse button to drag that out and then let go and your rabbit will be two size. Now once you've got that done you want to come over here to the color selection and uh, I'm going to drag that back in here. Since most of the uh, silly band style uh, rubber bands are uh, brightly colored, I'm going to just choose uh, like a fuchsia color here and say OK. Now I set that as my foreground color. I'll come over here to, this is actually the rabbit we created when we used our shapes. We created a work path and I'll click on the arrow next to that See if I can drag that in here a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to click on the arrow next to that, and you'll see we have the option to fill path. And we're going to use the foreground color, which uh, we set as that fuchsia color. So I'll click OK, and we'll see that the rabbit will fill in with the fuchsia color. Okay, and then we're done with the path for that section. Now what we want to do is go up to our thumbnail and hold down the control left mouse click and that will highlight just the rabbit uh, the outline of the rabbit and we're gonna uh, we don't want the whole rabbit we just want the outline of it so we're gonna go to select modify contract and I found that 15 pixels works well for these uh, shapes and click OK and you'll see that the dancing ants will move in on our rabbit. It's a little slow because we're doing the video. Um, but they've moved in from the edge and now I'm just going to click delete on the keyboard twice and that will wipe out that center area. So now we're left with just uh, the shape that we're looking for. And we're going to click select and deselect because we don't want those distracting ants there. Now we've got uh, a rabbit that's on the paper. Uh, but we want to make it a little bit more 3D to give it a more realistic effect. So we'll come over here to the layers and we'll right click on the rabbit layer, go to blending options, and there's three things that we're going to work with in here. Drag that up a little. We're going to want to drop shadow. See that's already looking a little bit 3D. And we're going to want bevel and emboss and a contour. And uh, I found just leaving the defaults um, for those are pretty good, but if you wanted to, you could uh, left click on your drop shadow and you can change uh, see the uh, amount of it, uh, how much you got. You, know, you can move it away from there. That doesn't really look too good. If you move it away from there, you kind of want to keep that 3D uh, look of the band sitting on the paper rather than you know, being part of the paper. And you can increase it a little bit more if you don't get the full effect that you want. Um, what I've also found is that 
with some of the lighter colors, uh, you may want to come into the bevel and emboss and just uh, using the, the shadow mode uh, on multiply, you may want to reduce that a little bit because it tends to overpower the, the darker colors or the lighter colors somewhat if you're using a yellow or a lime green. So you can, you can vary the amounts on that. And that's it. You've created uh, your first uh, Silly Band style creature. Uh, the, the best part about it is it's, it's on its own layer, so if you want to I know, move it somewhere else you can or put it somewhere else on your paper. Maybe you want to put it down here. Um, you know, if we were creating a greeting card, we could uh, just come over here to the text and using the same foreground color. And let's get some big print here. And I'll we'll go to, let's say, 36. And we could type happy birthday. And I'm just going to drag that over by left holding down the mouse. And we probably want that a lot bigger for the card too. We'll just come over here and highlight that and make it, let's say, 72. A little bit too big. How about 60? There we go. And that's it. Happy birthday. And I don't know who we're going to say. Uh, Susie, how about that? And now we've created one for. Uh, now, if we want to, we could put multiples on the page. If we went back to our um, rabbit there, we could just hold Control and J. And now we've created another one. You can't see it because they're stuck on top of each other, but we just move it away. And now we've got another one. Maybe it'd be better if we flip that around so it's facing the other direction. So we'll just go over there and transform it and flip that around. And we get some bizarre shapes going on there. Uh, as you can see, and I can also, let's say, uh, maybe we want one small and, and one big. We can scale that down. Uh, maybe a little bit more that way. There, now we got two nice rabbits on the page if she likes rabbits. And she likes silly pen style creatures. And that's it. We are done. We hit enter, and that'll lock in that transformation. That was that little beep you heard going on there. I failed to do that. Okay, so that's it. Now we've got a silly band on the page. And if you want to, the great thing about this is once you've got your first one done, uh, if you want to go back and create another one, uh, simply create another layer. Go back to your shapes. And I did the rabbit on that one. Maybe we want to do the fish for this one. So we come on, we're on our own layer, we're going to drag out a fish. There it is. Uh, we've got our work path there. Remember we click the arrow. Oh, you want to set your color before you get into that because it won't let you back out of that. So let's go in here. And yeah, we'll just pick an orange for the fish. Now we've got our foreground color. We'll come over here to fill path. And I could see that uh, foreground color fills our fish. And then once that's all filled up, we can come back to our layer. Control, left mouse click to select it. We go to select, modify, contract, 15 pixels. Moves it in, delete, delete. And very soon we'll have our new shape. But it'll still be, and you know, we're going to deselect that, it'll still be um, just drawn on the paper. We want it to be a separate element like I uh, have that 3D effect. But the great thing is once you've created one, you don't have to create those effects again. You can just go down to your previous layer, left mouse click on the effects, and drag it up to your new layer. And now you've got uh, a perfect fish there. Now if you want to change the color of it, if you've decided after you put it on that you're not really happy with that color, hold down the control again and left mouse click on your thumbnail. You'll see it selected that shape. We can go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, OK. And now what it'll let us do is because we selected that previously with the thumbnail, it'll change only the color of the fish. You'll see the rabbits will stay the same. So we can just go over here and using our, let's move this in a little bit so you can see the whole frame. You can use our hue saturation 
and we can change the color of the fish to red, purple, uh, dark blue, light blue, sea blue, uh, anything uh, in between. And if we want to intensify the color, we can use the saturation, just bump that up a little bit. If we want to lighten it or darken it, we have that option too. And then we'll just lock that in. And we can go back to that layer anytime and change the, the color of the fish that we want. So that's a quick tutorial on doing the fish and silly bands style um, creatures using Photoshop. And there's a lot we can do with those. So uh, I hope that was helpful for you. And remember, our tutorial is sponsored by the original Photoshop recipe cards, which can be found at photoshoptipcards.com, the easy way to do Photoshop.